iOS 18 is said to be one of the biggest updates ever, and we already know so much about it. So here are not 5, not 10, not 20, but 23 of the biggest rumor changes. At number 1 we have a more customizable home screen. The home screen on the iPhone hasn't really changed much since its launch. Sure, we got wallpapers, folders and widgets, but aside from that, it works in the exact same way. Well, we may just get one of the biggest changes yet, which is the ability to finally position our apps anywhere we want. And this is likely to work by allowing us to add invisible icons or widgets, which would then allow us to create the exact layout that we want. This was kind of doable in iOS 17 already, but you had to use a third-party app like Widgetsmith or Shortcuts. Being able to do this natively is going to be far more convenient. And we're also getting the ability to change the color of individual icons. In case you want to make all of your social icons blue, for example. Or in case you want your icons to match the style of your wallpaper, which does remind me a lot about Google's Material UI. Which means that if you're into customizing your home screen, you're absolutely going to love this update. And of course, you'll also need the great wallpaper to pair the custom icons with which you'll be able to get from our app Wallpapers. We offer the highest quality wallpapers out of any app out there, with full 8K resolution. Actually, we are almost 40% higher res than even 8K video, so you can use them on all of your devices and also zoom in to crop like crazy. Okay, now the next big iOS 18 update is the next gen Siri. However, if you were hoping for something at the same level as, you know, the ChatGPT voice assistant, we're not getting that until at least 2025. And I said 2025 because Apple's still in the process of finalizing a deal with OpenAI, as well as Google for ChatGPT and Gemini integration in the future. The main upgrade this year will be Siri's ability to do anything that you want her to do inside of an app, like moving a note to another folder, deleting an email, emailing a web link, and so on. This looks to be exactly what Apple has been describing in their paper papers for their Ferret UI LLM. On top of this, Siri is also said to be more natural in terms of her speech and understanding context. By being able to take into account people, companies, calendar events, and more when responding to you. And what's going to make Siri even more powerful is her ability to reside inside other apps and understand what you're doing and then also help you along the way. The more basic of Apple's AI features will run on device, likely on the iPhone 15 Pro or newer, while more advanced AI features will run on Apple's AI servers powered by Apple's M2 Ultra chip. And, as expected, Apple's AI servers will have some pretty serious privacy policies in place. Now, one of these in-app Siri integrations will be in Safari, where Intelligent Search will be able to summarize web pages, kind of similar to the AI Assistant in the Arc browser, as well as erase certain elements from web pages, likely ads, kind of what Apple's Reader already does, only now it will be automatic. There's also to be a new quick access menu included here as well. Then, in the Mail app, we'll now be able to reply using automatically generated generated text responses. To some extent, we do get suggestions now too, but the idea here is that we'll be able to write full emails using the new version of Siri here, which will also apply to messages. But aside from this, messages is also getting some other nice upgrades too, such as the ability to have RCS support built in, which got announced at the end of last year for the first time, and we're also getting some new text effects, like confetti and bubbles that we've had so far, of course, just new ones. And we're also apparently getting AI emojis. Essentially, iOS will be able to automatically generate emojis based on what you're texting, far exceeding the already large library of emojis that we have. Then, the Notes app is also said to be getting some major updates, like the ability to summarize text as well as transcribe an audio recording from a meeting into text, very similar to what Samsung introduced on the S24s, as well as the ability to recognize mathematical equations. Then, in the Photos app, we'll now be able to remove certain objects using generative AI, once again very similar to Galaxy AI and Google's Magic Eraser feature. Then, the Calculator app is getting some much-needed updates, including a much-requested sidebar for recent calculations, integrations with the Notes app, as well as an iPad version too. All of which I think were very, very needed, especially that sidebar. 
I basically never use the calculator app and always do spotlight search because of that, since I needed to see my calculator history. Then Apple Music is also getting some updates, like the ability to auto-generate playlists based on your requirements, as well as possibly improved song transitions. Apple Maps is getting two notable changes too, like topographic maps coming to the iPhone, as they were previously only on the Apple Watch, as well as custom routes. Then the calendar app will now allow us to schedule reminders directly from it, without a need to open up the separate reminders app. Then the Freeform app will have some updates too, like the ability to have scenes and navigate easier using keyboard shortcuts. Then the Health app is also adding some AI features, although it isn't quite clear as to what these will be. Personally, I'm thinking that these will be suggestions based on your overall activity and health. And then CarPlay is also said to be getting some updates, some of which have already been confirmed by Apple, like the ability to control apps using your voice, then color filters, and also the ability for users who have hearing impairments to receive visual notifications for when someone honks at you or for when there is a siren. Then, the next version of CarPlay is also said to be making an appearance. Although, at this point, no manufacturers have actually started adopting it, for obvious reasons. This is the one, by the way, where Apple takes full control over the car's UI. So, it does make sense why manufacturers have decided not to adopt it, as they want to have full control over their style and branding. Then, Keynote, Pages and Numbers are said to be getting some AI features too such as the ability to auto-generate slides and aid with writing, which I think could be a game-changer as Microsoft's Copilot integration with Office does cost extra and Google's isn't fully here yet. And the Shortcuts app is also getting some updates. More specifically, users will now be able to create shortcuts much easier by just asking Siri to do it for them. Now, I've used shortcuts in the past, although only for basic things like uh, starting music when I get home and turning on the lights. Although there are some crazy advanced things that you can do with it, such as automatically creating an image like this whenever you take a screenshot on your phone. And being able to create these automations much faster using Siri could be a game changer. But I think that one of my favorite AI features in iOS 18 is going to be notification recaps. Essentially, uh, Siri will be able to automatically summarize your notifications, giving you an overall idea of everything that you've missed. And I think that's great. I get hundreds of notifications every single day, and it's honestly so hard to keep track of them. Yes, I know, Apple does have the scheduled summary feature right now, but I was never a fan of it as I never found it to do a good job. This does seem like it would be a much improved version of the scheduled summary thanks to Apple's AI. We're also getting a number of new accessibility features, which surprisingly, Apple has already talked about. We get eye tracking, allowing users with physical impairments to control their iPhone or iPad by just using their eyes. Haptics in Apple Music are also an option now, allowing users who are deaf to still experience music by feeling the haptics of each song. There's also vocal shortcuts now, allowing Siri to understand a typical speech and still allow you to control your device. Plus, a bunch of other accessibility updates that Apple has also detailed on their website. Then there are also to be some changes coming to the control center, more specifically, an upgraded music widget, and then also improved controls for HomeKit accessories. And then the Settings app is also said to be getting a revamp with a reorganized and cleaner look that just makes it easier to navigate, something that I do think is desperately needed as I often find myself just searching for whatever I need to find. So having said all of this, it is very clear that iOS 18 will be one of the biggest updates ever. So will your iPhone actually be able to run it? Well, it looks like iOS 18 will work with the same iPhones that iOS 17 has worked on. So as long as you've got an iPhone XS or newer, or a second gen iPhone SE or newer, you'll be able to run it. However, like I said before, it is very likely that the majority of AI features will be restricted to the iPhone 15 and possibly even just the 15 Pro at least the on-device AI features. It could be that these will run on the cloud on older iPhones or may not run at all. But let me know what you guys think about these upcoming updates to iOS 18. And stay tuned for our WWC What to Expect video as there's so much more to talk about than just iOS 18. I'm Daniel, Tunes of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenom Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.